House Majority Leader Steve Scalise says he's been diagnosed with a form of blood cancer. The Louisiana Republican is undergoing treatment and described the condition as, quote, very treatable. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now here in the studio. Hey, Scott. Good to see you. But bad news for uh, Mr. Scalise, who has already gone through so much medically after that shooting a few years ago and his long-term recovery. What can you tell us about this situation? The majority leader of the U.S. House, who works a necessarily tireless job, says he will work through this, through his recovery, through his treatment. He has all kinds of support from his colleagues of both parties, some very supportive statements for Majority Leader Scalise today. Um, yeah, six years ago, he was shot. Mm -hmm. And he is still, you can see, visibly impacted by that horrific shooting. You know, he, he walks with a different gait, moves a little more slowly in the hallways, but his job, is uniquely difficult at this moment. Being House Majority Leader would probably be one of the more stressful jobs in America. He does it with a remarkably narrow margin to navigate as well. Steve Scalise, um, I'll underscore this, he is one of the members working through cancer at this moment in time. There are others. Congressman Castro of Texas is not yet cancer-free as he undergoes treatment for cancer. Just recently, Congressman Kildee of Michigan, Congressman Raskin of Maryland wow. have been declared cancer-free. It's just, it's it's what American workplaces deal with. Right. It is a microcosm of America, and Steve Scalise is a microcosm of the American worker now. Right, a real reflection of what so many Americans are going through. I want to ask you, uh, as we have this hurricane bearing down on Florida about FEMA funds. The FEMA director was in the White House briefing room today. Let's listen to a little bit of her, and then you've been doing some reporting on FEMA funding. Right now, the supplemental request that we have put in is $12 billion, and that will be a bridge to get us through the end of the fiscal year. Uh, if we continue to see more storms, we're going to uh, continuously monitor very closely the health of the disaster relief fund to determine what more may be needed. But Hawaii wildfires, not cheap. Now you've got potentially another major disaster bearing down. What is the situation? Does FEMA have the money it needs? As this night began, sources tell me that there is grave concern in Congress that they don't have the political ability at this moment to replenish that disaster fund quickly. Every September, FEMA runs low on money. It's just the end of the fiscal year. It's how things go. It gets so dire starting today because of this hurricane. FEMA has now officially paused spending on long-term recovery in some of these areas that were just bludgeoned in July. Think of Vermont, mm -hmm. Hudson Valley of New York, horrible floods, other wildfires elsewhere in America. They have to pull back long-term FEMA projects because they need to use the rest of their money, a few billion dollars, towards hurricane preparations to ensure nobody dies. Maui wildfires, it's still an emergency situation. The next few things coming where life and death is on the line. They can hold off and pause the longer term things where there's no longer lives on the line. But in a state like Vermont, tax base is low. There are still enormous expenses they need federal help for. FEMA now just hit the snooze button, which is going to disrupt things. And normally, in a normal time, you covered Congress for so many years, you know, Congress would move swiftly to get emergency money passed. This Congress just doesn't have a, a record of moving swiftly on anything, emergency or otherwise. Right. They were already facing the possibility of a government shutdown at the end of September. The Another big, and you, you put it at, at likely. That's troubling. Um, but, uh, you know, this is just another uh, chink in the armor. And we got a couple more months left in hurricane season. Scott McFarland, thank you so much.